Welcome back to The Bottom Line. In today's segment of The Bottom Line, I'm going to discuss flow-down clauses, what they are, what you need to know about them, and what you need to do about them. Some of you watching this segment may be asking, what is a flow-down clause? And others have probably seen them, but just don't know that's what they're called. But a flow-down clause, as its name suggests, is a contractual provision that shifts responsibilities and obligations in a construction project downstream from the general contractor to the subcontractor and on down the line to the lower tier subcontractors. Here's a typical example of a flow-down clause. By executing this subcontract, the subcontractor agrees to assume toward the general contractor all of the duties and responsibilities that the general contractor assumes toward the owner and architect engineer. Provisions like this are aimed at helping contractors that are higher up in the construction hierarchy such as general contractors and first-tier subcontractors, make sure that they can comply with their obligations upstream to the owner, or in the case of a subcontractor, their obligations to the general contractor. Here's an example. Suppose the prime contract between the owner and the general contractor requires the general contractor to notify the owner of a claim within a specified period of time. We'll say five days. But let's also say that the claims provision also says that the general contractor has to provide documentation to the owner or the architect substantiating the claim and the amount of the claim within 15 days. Well, if you are the general contractor, you want to make sure that all of your subcontractors comply with that provision so that the general contractor can meet its obligations to the owner and avoid losing valuable rights to assert a claim. So a typical flow-down clause, if it appears in the subcontract and does its job, will essentially tell the subcontractor, we have these requirements with the owner and we are expecting you, the subcontractors, to assist us to comply with them. So, in the example I gave earlier, the subcontractor would be required to notify the general contractor within the five days of their knowing of the claim and would then have to follow up with providing sufficient documentation to show entitlement to the claim and the amount of the claim. That way, the general contractor is not stuck in the middle and without any abilities to substantiate a claim and potentially risk its right to a change order or an equitable adjustment. So, obviously, if you are a general contractor, you want to make sure that your subcontracts have a flow-down clause. But let's focus on the subcontractor for a moment. If there is a flow-down clause in your subcontract, you are going to want to make sure that your subcontracts with the lower-tier subs also have a flow-down clause. So that way, as a subcontractor, you can make sure you can comply with your responsibilities upstream to the general contractor. But as a subcontractor, something you absolutely want to do, and it may sound simple, but if there is a flow-down clause in your contract with the general contractor, make absolutely sure you get a copy of the prime contract. The reason for that is, if you are bound by the terms of the prime contract to the same extent that the prime contractor is bound to the owner, you need to make sure you know what your obligations are because your responsibilities may not entirely be covered in the four corners of the subcontract. So the bottom line is this. Flow-down clauses are very typical in the construction field and more often than not you will see them in the subcontracts between the prime contractor and the subcontractor. But whether you are a prime contractor, a subcontractor, or a lower tier subcontractor, you need to make sure you are fully aware of whether a flow-down clause exists and its legal implications. If you have any questions about this video, please feel free to contact me or any of the other attorneys at Harrison Law Group.